Jada and Stitches show. Today we are going to make some really cute little crochet thread button flowers. So this is a great little project to use up any of that crochet thread you might have lying around, your buttons, it's kind of a nice little scrap project. These things don't use up very much thread and it's a fun way to get accustomed to using a super fine steel hook and fine crochet thread. Why would you want to make a couple of these? Well, they make a cute little fridge magnet. You can put a little magnet on the back, stick it to the fridge. You can add a pin to it, wear it as a brooch. You can also glue it to a hair barrette and wear it in your hair. <laughs> you could also put a little metal jump ring through the top of one of the petals and it makes a substantially fantastic pendant for a necklace. There's a lot of fun little things you can do with this. You can also use them in scrapbooking, project journaling, or if you want to reach out to someone who's feeling a little isolated right now, pop one into a greeting card and send it through the mail. It is the sweetest little pick-me-up. If you're not used to using a steel hook and thread, then we've got some suggestions for you. So I recommend you get a steel hook with a grip on it. Of course you can use the ones that don't have a grip, but if you have never bought a steel hook before, you might find one with a comfort grip on it. It's a little easier to transition from a regular hook to a steel hook with, and we'll show you what mine looks like in the materials section. So nice and comfortable, easy to grip, especially if you have grip issues like someone like me. <laughs> Also, you might find that you need to change up the way you hold your hook and your thread. You might want to hold it closer to your face. You might find putting your hands down on a flat workspace hurt, um, helps. <laughs> Take a moment to get used to your hook and handling the thread because it does feel a little bit different than a regular crochet hook and yarn. And number three, pause the video. <laughs> you're probably going to want to move a lot slower with this project than you might usually when you're zipping along with your crochet hook and your yarn. I know I have to move slower when I'm working with thread. So if you are watching this, you want to pause the video anytime you feel it's necessary just to catch up or take your time. Do not feel rushed making this little project. And once you make one, the second one will go a little faster and the third one will go a little faster than that and you'll be zipping along in no time. So let's grab our hooks. We'll grab our crochet thread and buttons. We'll head on over to the craft table and we will stitch up some little button flowers together. In order to make our little button flowers today, we're using crochet thread. This is a size 10. I've got a really pretty variegated crochet thread here. It's pretty fine stuff. You need less than 20 yards, however, so not a lot for this project. You're gonna want a pair of scissors, a needle with an eye large enough that your crochet thread can fit through it. You might want a safety pin or a little stitch marker. And the hook is a 1.75 millimeter, so super small. You can also use a two millimeter hook for this project. Uh, depending on the make of your hook and where you are in the US, this might be a size zero. It could also be a steel hook size five. Um, this is a clover hook, so it's decided it's a zero. <laughs> If you're in the UK and you've got your granny's old hooks, this might be a size 14 or a size two. So um, plenty of different numbers and sizes to choose from there. <laughs> you're also going to want to have some buttons. Obviously you want one button per flower. I'm using pretty large buttons here. These are all approximately one inch to an inch and an eighth or an inch and a quarter. And you can measure your button by running your measuring tape right across the middle of it to figure out its diameter. If I want to flip my little measuring tape over here, this is just under three centimeters. These ones are a little bit bigger here. So this project works with fairly decent sized buttons in this size range. So just under an inch, just over an inch, uh, any one of them will do. And once you've got all that together, we can get started. If you really enjoy our show and you have a lot of fun with us here, then consider supporting us. You can subscribe, click the like button, share our videos with your friends, or you can purchase a pattern at our Etsy shop or join and become a channel member. You'll find more information in the description box down below, links to our Etsy shop and also how to join. And there's more information if you click that join button below this browser. We're going to start with a little slip knot on our hook. Now, this is working pretty small. If you're not used to working with thread, just take your time. Go nice and slow. There's absolutely no reason to rush through this. So once you've got that itty bitty little slip knot on your hook, we're going to chain eight. If you're using a larger button, like a, 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 maybe an inch and a, an eighth or an inch and a quarter, you can chain 10. So if you're just a little under an inch or about an inch, chain eight. If you're over an inch by an eighth or a quarter, then you want to chain 10. 
So once you've got your chain length, either 8 or 10 to start with, it doesn't really matter, you're going to make a ring by just taking your hook and slipping it through that first chain that you made and slip stitch to join. So we're starting with a little chained ring and this is going to allow us to use the button as an actual button if you ever want to sew it down to something. So that little button area will sort of peek through that open ring. Or of course it's just a nice way to see some of the color of your button through the middle of your pretty little flower. We're going to be using the treble crochet stitch a lot in this project, but since it's tiny, it's not, I find, as difficult um, to use as it is when you're using a bigger hook and thicker yarn because the stitches aren't as tall. We're going to chain four. Chain fours count as a treble crochet, but before we leave, we're gonna chain two more. So row one starts with a chain six, the first four chains count as a treble. The next two chains are just a chain two space. We're going to work nine more little treble crochet chain two into this ring. And when I say nine more, I mean we're going to treble crochet. So yarn over twice, put your hook right through that ring, pick up a loop, and you might have to roll things around, but you should have four little tiny loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over, pull back through the first two loops, yarn over, pull back through the next two loops, yarn over, and pull back through the last two loops. So it's basically just a little taller than a typical double crochet stitch. Chain two for a spacer. And that's what you're going to do all the way around. So we've already got our chain six, which counts as a treble crochet chain two. Now we've got a real treble crochet chain two, and we're gonna do this eight more times. We want a total of 10 little spokes, all separated by chain twos all the way around. So yarn over twice, pick up a loop through that ring. You can yarn over, pull back through two, yarn over, pull back through two, yarn over, pull back through two. That's a treble crochet, nice and tiny. Chain two for a spacer and continue. So seven more now. Okay, we should have a chain six to begin. That counts as a treble crochet, chain two. And then nine more treble crochet, chain two, worked into that ring all the way around. Don't forget the last chain two. And you're gonna find the fourth chain, so you can count up for fourth chain of that little chain six that began, and you're going to join with a slip stitch. Okay, there we go. So we've all got something that looks like this, looks sort of like a spinning wheel with a nice big ring in the middle. And you can like tug on that a bit. You want this to just stretch out ever so slightly because we are going to be squeezing a button into it down the road, but not quite yet. Row two, row two I think is the easiest. <laughs> We're gonna chain one to begin. And into that same place that we chained one out of, you're just going to single crochet. So pluck your hook back through that chain four loop that you grabbed to close the last row. You're just going to single crochet right into the same place that you joined. Chain five. Skip the next treble crochet find the treble crochet after that, and single crochet into the top of it. Chain five. Skip the next treble crochet, find the next one, here it is here, and single crochet right into the top of it. You're going to repeat that all the way around. By the end of the row, you'll have five big chain five loops running around the edge of your little spinning wheel. Your little chain five spaces and your single crochets are just going to tighten things up just a little tiny bit. So if it's starting to look a bit squished on you, don't worry. Chain your last five, you're going to 
So there's your chain five. You're going to skip the next treble crochet. That should bring you back to where you began. There's the single crochet that started. If you're unsure, count. There's one chain five loop, two chain five loops, three down here, four over here. You've just made the fifth one. And you're going to slip stitch into the top of that single crochet that began the row. And that is row two complete. And row two is kind of turning it into a little bit of a bowl. If it's not, if you find that your chain five spaces and your single crochets sit nice and neatly all the way around the edge and the whole thing lays flat, that's fine too. Don't worry about it. All of our tension's a bit different. But row three will pull everything into a bit of a bowl shape that we can slip our little button into. So no worries about tension here. We're going to chain four to begin row three. The chain four counts as a treble crochet. And here is where you might want to add that little tiny safety pin or stitch marker in. So I realize we're working pretty tiny here. I'm just going to put mine in just so you can see what it looks like. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I find it does make it a little easier to see. So I'm just gonna mark that last chain. So the top of that chain four with a little tiny stitch marker just so I know where the top of that treble crochet is when I get back around. Only because, like I said, things are going to kind of turn itself into a bowl. And if you're using a solid color, and this is the first little button flower that you're making, then that solid color might make things a little less easy to see. So just mark the top of that chain four. All right, here we go. We're going to be treble crocheting all the way around. So nothing fancy, no extra chains, just treble crocheting. And we're going to be treble crocheting in the top of each treble crochet from row one. But we're going to do it by taking row two, which is those little chain five loops, and just sort of trying to peel them forward. So grab it, push it forward, or push it forward when you're ready to work into the top of that treble crochet. So there's the top of the treble crochet. I'm going to wrap my yarn around twice. I'm going to Ignore the chain five, so either pull it forward or slip my hook underneath it so I can get at the top of that first treble crochet. I'm going to get in the top of it there. There we go. So if you're working close to your face, it's probably a lot easier to see. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to work around a camera here. But there you go. You want to take the top of that treble crochet, peel that chain five space closer to you just to get it out of the way. We're ignoring row two at the moment. And then you're going to just treble crochet as normal. So yarn over, back through two, yarn over, back through two, yarn over, back through two. Remember that chain four counts as a treble crochet and we've marked the top of it. The next treble crochet we come to has a single crochet in the top of it. So this one may be easier to work with. Yarn over twice, and you're going to keep that row two peeled to the front. You can see where I single crocheted into the top of it. So I'm just gonna turn it over here, try to make it as clear as possible. So there's the little single crochet stitch, and I've just plunked my hook right through the top of the treble crochet but underneath that single crochet of row two. And then I'm going to treble crochet as normal. And now you can see that row two sits on top of row three. Row three is worked underneath row two. Very fine stuff. Okay, fourth treble crochet of row three. We're back to an untouched treble crochet. So you peel that little chain five space forward. Try not to grab it. There we go. Get in the top of that stitch there. And treble crochet. Like I said, when you work small, you want to be nice and patient. You want to move a little slower than normal. Give your fingers a chance to catch up with how tiny this work is. It does require a little bit of extra dexterity. I'm putting my hook underneath that row two, chain five space. I'm putting it in the top of that treble crochet underneath the single crochet that anchored that chain five. And I'm gonna treble crochet.
I'm keeping those chain five spaces to the front. So you should have something that looks like that so far. And this whole thing is going to start to curl as you work around because you're working treble crochets into the top of each treble crochet, but we're not working chain two spaces in between them because we want to close the whole thing up. And I'll show you what that looks like. So there's our chained ring, all of our little treble crochet chain twos that marks the front of our flower. All of our little petals are worked into those chain five spaces. So we come back to that later, but all of those treble crochets worked around the back help to close the whole thing in and we're going to squeeze our little button into that space before we close up row three. So just take your time, work all the way around, making sure that you get a treble crochet in the top of each of those treble crochet stitches from row one. Remember to push that chain five space to the front as you work. Just sort of trying to get it so that you can see nice and clear here. There we go. So I pull it to the front. I can expose that middle treble crochet. Treble crochet into the top of it. I'm keeping that chained ring or that chained loop to the front and I'm just going to continue that all the way around and the whole thing is going to pull in on me. So just take your time. You're going to make sure that you've got 10 treble crochets and that includes that chain four that began. So if you're wondering where you're at, just stop for a moment, count them up. So chain four counts as one. One, two, three, four, five, six. I've done six so far. So I've got four more to do and I'll catch up with you at the end of row three. All right, I've completed my 10th treble crochet. Again, these are all worked into the top of the treble crochets from row one. So we're skipping row two, we're kind of pushing it to the floor front so we can get at the top of those treble crochets. And if you kind of move things around, you should see that you've got a little bit of a cage happening back here. We're gonna pull up on our loop, nice and tall. And we're just gonna take a moment to kind of take a look at what we've got so far. So there's the top of the last treble. You can probably stick your finger into this, it looks like a little cage. Just sort of spin it around. My stitch marker is marking the top of the chain four that began the row. And then all the way around the edge is row two, those chain five loops. Those are going to be the base of our petals. And then of course row one is that little spinning sort of wheel thing. Before we close up row three, we want to slip our button into this little cage. So this is gonna require a little bit of stretching, a little bit of yanking and pulling, so don't worry if it feels a bit awkward, because it is. <laughs> You're gonna take your button, make sure you have identified the top or the bottom, so that's my top, and I'm gonna flip it upside down and slip it in so that the top of my button faces out through row one. And I'm gonna try and pull that little cage of treble crochets all the way around. There should be quite a sizable gap between your last treble and the top of your chain four. It's okay, when we close things up, that will neaten itself up nice and tight. So I'm just gonna pull on that, make sure it's all as in there as it can get. It's gonna look a little awkward, that's totally fine. I'm going to put our hook back in our loop and now, right there where our little stitch marker marks that chain four, top of that chain four, you're gonna slip your hook through it. From the front, from the back, doesn't matter, just get your hook in there. You can take that stitch marker out now. It's probably helpful if you're working on a, um, working on a surface or if you know you hold it up close to your face, whichever is more comfortable to you. And then, so pull tight on that, that thread to make sure that last loop is nice and tight and you're just going to slip stitch. So grab your thread, first pull it back through that chain four, pull it back through that loop, and then pull the whole thing nice and tight. Nice and tight. Great. And that closes up your little cage around your button. And if it still feels a little tight, don't worry, just pull on those Chain five loops. We haven't even put the petals on yet, so don't worry. The whole thing will move around a little bit. You can also sort of shift those treble crochets from row one around that center. And with use, this little thing will even itself out. Okay, let's get to the petals. How do we get from this little spot all the way up to our little petal edges? No big deal. 
you're just going to slip stitch through the sides of that chain four. So just slip your hook through one of those chains, slip stitch, don't make it too tight, and then maybe through the top of it, top loop, slip stitch once more, there you go. And that brings you up to the edge. So you've slip stitched up from here all the way up to the edge. Now we're working into what was row two. We're going to make our petals. This is a fun part. <laughs> and again, I feel it's pretty easy because now you've got this giant space to work into. You don't have to worry about the rest of your button or any of those little treble crochets anymore. We're just concentrating on working into a big space. Every petal is exactly the same. We're going to begin with a single crochet and all stitches are worked right through that chain five loop. So single crochet, half double crochet, double crochet, if you want to stop and pull some of those stitches sort of back towards the other end so that you keep that space nice and open. You're going to work five treble crochets now into that same space. So remember that's two wraps, pick up a loop, yarn over, back through two, yarn over, back through two, yarn over, back through two. That's a treble. You want to do four more. So five treble crochets in the middle of each petal. So that's five. You pull back on those stitches, give yourself just a little more space to finish off your petal. And now we're going sort of steps. So step up to the five treble crochets and then step back down the other side. We close it with a double crochet. A half double crochet. And a single crochet. So still working into that chain five space. Then you're going to find the top of that single crochet and you're just going to slip stitch into it. And that is your first petal. So just to recap, you're going to do four more of these. They're all identical. You go single crochet, half double crochet, double crochet, five treble crochets, double crochet, half double crochet, single crochet, and then slip stitch into the top of that single crochet from row two. And all of those stitches, with the exception of the slip stitch, are worked into the chain five space. So that's how you get yourself a little petal. Then you just start all over in the next space, working all your stitches through that space. Single, half, double, five trebles, double, half, single, and then slip stitch. Once you've finished your last petal, so let's, you slip stitch into the top of the single crochet, you single crochet, half double crochet, double crochet, five treble crochets, double crochet, half double crochet, single crochet. The last thing you're going to do is you're going to slip stitch into the top of that single crochet. Now, if all you can grab is a piece of stitch from back here or maybe an edge of the other petal doesn't matter you're just closing off the row so just slip stitch to close off that row so that your petals sort of sit next to each other and then you can grab your scissors snip your thread fasten off like we normally do pull that nice and tight now, if you didn't work over your little short tail like I did for the first row, you might still have that out there. So you want to thread it up and just weave it through the middle. And same thing with this one. You want to thread it up with your needle and just weave it back and forth through some of those stitches in the bottom of the petal. And if all you can do is get it through that first petal, maybe the second petal, and it's really, really tight, don't worry. That's enough. It's not going to come out. It's not going to go anywhere. So go ahead and grab your needle and do a little threading. 
Once you've threaded it underneath some of the stitches, you just ran your needle basically through those stitches out the other side. It's pretty tight. Um, you can go back and forth a couple times if you want, but if it feels like it's definitely not going to come out, then just go ahead and trim whatever's left. Careful not to snip any of your stitches. There we go. And then you can just tug on your petals, pull them out, move the little tiny spokes around on the outside of your little flower. You can do the same thing on the back just to make sure it's nice and even. This is the back. This is the front and of course you can treat it like a regular button. You can still sew through that center if you want to sew it down to something or you can use it for just about anything else in the craft world. And there you go. A thread covered crochet button flower. <laughs> I never thought I'd be able to make these when I first started crocheting and now I'm absolutely in love with using crochet thread as long as it's a tiny project. <laughs> We hope you enjoyed making these along with us this week, and we will see you soon here on the Jaden Stitches Show. Till then, stay safe, stay crafty, have an awesome week, everybody. Bye! Hi, everyone. This is Mom and Stitches. Thank you for watching. Here are a few other videos you might enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe, and you can also click the like button and the bell. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.